Hi, my name is Ben and I'm the CEO of Ascend where we help people understand the ins and outs of bankruptcy and other debt relief options. Today I want to talk about eight reasons why bankruptcy may be a terrible idea. I'd recommend watching until the end as number seven may be a little bit less intuitive as most people think. Hopefully each of these scenarios will be really helpful as the last thing you probably want to do is commit bankruptcy fraud. Welcome to the Ascend Finance YouTube channel where we take complex topics such as bankruptcy and break them down into human understandable language. Today we're going to cover eight different reasons why bankruptcy may be a terrible idea. This video is quite long and you're probably looking at the number of minutes below and thinking how am I going to get through all of this content. The last thing I would want to do is listen to a video of me speaking for over five, ten minutes. So we added chapters below so you can skip around to whatever content is most relevant to you. Before we begin, I also want to let you know that your situation is unique. My goal is to answer all your questions, but if, if I don't, please comment below and we'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Also, if this is helpful, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to this video as that's really encouraging to me and, and motivates me to make additional unbiased content. Okay, so let's jump right in. You are already in a stressful situation and making a bankruptcy mistake may make this situation even more stressful. For example, do you know how much bankruptcy will actually cost? And should you use your credit cards before filing bankruptcy? So the first thing we're going to look at where bankruptcy may be a terrible idea is if you don't understand the cost and the fees. So the first thing is know the cost of bankruptcy. When you file a bankruptcy with an attorney, one of your biggest fees will be the bankruptcy attorney fees. Now, many bankruptcy attorneys will take payments as you are already in financial hardship, so it's difficult to kind of figure out those funds. That said, there's a huge difference in the cost between based on the chapter and expertise and attorney interaction of the attorney that you have. Because the costs are such an important element, we actually built an all-in bankruptcy cost calculator that I included in the description below. It takes about two to five minutes and it's based on your state and zip code. And it'll tell you kind of the things like how much is the filing fee? How much is the attorney gonna cost? What are the different chapters and how much are those gonna cost? So when you do have your free consultation, you won't go in blind and not knowing what's gonna cost me and how much everything is gonna be. Now that we kind of cover the cost and knowing the cost, another thing that you may want to stop using is your credit cards. Now, you cannot get rid of debts you incur in immediately before filing bankruptcy. Therefore, you may want to stop using your credit cards when you think about filing a bankruptcy case. Running up your credit card debt before filing a bankruptcy could be a costly mistake. Using credit cards for luxury services or goods totally more than $800 within 90 days of filing bankruptcy is presumed fraud. Additionally, cash advances totally more than $1,100 within 70 days before filing bankruptcy is presumed fraud. Therefore, the credit card company can object to the discharge of this debt. Third, do not sell or transfer property or money. If you give away or sell your assets before filing bankruptcy, the Chapter 7 trustee may sue the person to recover the assets. Trying to conceal assets by transferring them is bankruptcy fraud. You might be able to sell an asset for fair market value and use the funds for living expenses without causing a problem. However, it is best to check with a bankruptcy lawyer before transferring any property before filing bankruptcy. The property might be protected by bankruptcy exemptions, which would allow you to keep the property. Many people who file bankruptcy keep their property. However, trying to hide your property could result in you losing the property because you committed bankruptcy fraud. Fourth, you may not want to withdraw money from your retirement accounts. Most retirement accounts are exempt when you file for bankruptcy relief. However, you lose the exemption if you withdraw the money from your 401k or other retirement accounts. That money could be taken by the Chapter 7 trustee or counted as an asset when calculating your Chapter 13 plan. So instead, you may leave that money in your account and use bankruptcy exemptions to protect your money. Fifth, you may not want to pay family members or friends before filing bankruptcy. Paying family members or friends within one year before filing bankruptcy is considered a preferential transfer. The bankruptcy trustee can sue them to recover the money for the bankruptcy estate. If you owe your family or friends a debt, you must list that debt in your bankruptcy. If the money they gave you was a gift, you don't need to list it them as a creditor. When you receive the final order closing your bankruptcy case, you may voluntarily pay back any money you owe to family members and friends. However, if those individuals are listed in your bankruptcy case as unsecured creditors, you are not legally required to repay the debt. 
Sixth, you may not want to use money from your home equity line to pay debts. Before using the equity line on your home to repay debts, talk with a bankruptcy lawyer. Bankruptcy exemptions may protect the equity in your home. If your home is covered by bankruptcy exemptions, neither your creditors nor the bankruptcy trustees can use the equity in your home to repay unsecured debts. In other words, you may be able to file Chapter 7 bankruptcy, get rid of your unsecured debts, and keep the equity in your home. We actually built a bank bankruptcy exemptions calculator that helps you estimate the amount of equity that you have in your home relative to your state's bankruptcy exemption allowable. This can give you a sense of if you have equity that is over the exemptions and the different chapters that you might consider based on that exemptions. We include in the description below the bankruptcy exemptions calculator that can help you kind of understand the equity in your home versus the allowable equity from the bankruptcy exemption guidelines. You may well not want to file a bankruptcy case before receiving a valuable asset. If you receive an asset during your bankruptcy case, you could lose those assets, especially if you did not disclose the asset on your bankruptcy forms and claiming bankruptcy exemptions for the asset. You'll definitely want to talk to the bankruptcy attorney about this in detail. For example, suppose you anticipate receiving a $6,000 tax fund. However, you do not disclose the tax refund as an asset and claim a bankruptcy exemption. In that case, the Chapter 7 bankruptcy trustee might seize your tax refund. You should, Like I said, you should definitely consult with a bankruptcy lawyer if you think you could receive a bonus from work, inheritance, tax refund, gift, or other assets during your bankruptcy case. A bankruptcy attorney can review your case to determine whether the asset could be in jeopardy if you file bankruptcy. If so, a bankruptcy attorney can also discuss other debt relief options or time the filing for your bankruptcy case to protect the asset, as long as that's legal. Eight, you never want to lie about your income or your expenses. Now, it may be tempting to increase your expenses or decrease your income to qualify for Chapter 7 bankruptcy or lower your bankruptcy plan payments in a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. However, the bankruptcy trustee reviews the copies of your paysteads and other evidence of income for six months before filing bankruptcy. Many trustees also carefully review your current pay stubs and your tax returns. In some cases, a bankruptcy trustee might request proof of ex expenses, especially if those expenses appear higher than an average for a family of your size. If you claim extraordinary expenses, you may be required to provide proof of paying the expense and proof of why the expense is necessary. For example, one expense that may be necessary is the special dietary needs of a person with a health condition. These are all things that you can consider. So the question is, should should you file bankruptcy? Filing for bankruptcy is ultimately your decision and you understand your situation best. You can take the bankruptcy cost calculated below to estimate the cost and qualification. And I hope that these eight reasons why bankruptcy may be a terrible idea will be helpful to you. Now, if you have any questions at all, please comment below and we get back to you as soon as possible. If you liked this video and want to see other content, please subscribe to our channel as we are constantly producing new content that we focus as unpiased and helps you get a debt cheaper, easier, and faster. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.